one of the things I've been trying to do in Greek grammar and also Hebrew grammar would be to do brief inductive grammatical study in which if you're following me with a Greek New Testament or a Hebrew Bible, uh, I would encourage you to have it open and try to follow with me as we work through the Greek uh, text together. At this point, we'll be doing the Greek. At times, we do Hebrew. And so what we're looking at is, Hebrew, or is Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5 to 18. And we're going to do a brief Greek grammar, inductive, looking at each word and trying to see how each word uh, linguistically can be understood, along with commentary. So introducing the section that we're looking at, uh, which is in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5 and following, we need to give a, give a background. And as we look at the background, the book of Hebrews is showing the superiority of Christ, his superiority over angels in the first two chapters, his superiority over Moses in chapter 3, his superiority over the Aaronic priesthood in chapter 5 and 7, and then the superiority over the, uh, the fact, over the sacrificial system, the fact that Christ now serves in the heavenly sanctuary. And so as we come to this text that we'll be looking at, uh, the writer of Hebrews is going to show how that the sacrificial system has now been replaced by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And so we begin in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5, and I'll read the, or, uh, the Greek, and then we will uh, translate it and talk about it grammatically. Notice it reads, Dia eser kamenas eistan kosman lege, thusian kai prosferan uk ethelesas, summa de carter. Carter Tisomoi, Alla Kaltomata Kaipuri Hamartias Uk Yudakesas. Let's begin. Actually, I read verses five and six, but let's look at it together. Notice we begin with Dia. Uh, as we start with Dia, we're looking at <clears throat> the beginning that leads us in to Eserkamenas. And Eserkamenas, uh, by the way, the A is just a conjunction wherefore. Eserkamenas is a participial construction, present middle nominative masculine singular from Eser, Eserkamai. And it is picturing the incarnation of Jesus Christ as he comes into the world. And so as we read on, it's ace tan kosman lege, coming into the world. Ace is your accusative case, meaning into, and tan is just your accusative masculine singular article, the. Kosman is your accusative masculine singular noun from cosmos. Notice the on ending indicating uh, the accusative, uh, masculine, and tan, the article, gives it away as well. So coming into the world, lege, he is saying. Uh, lege is the present indicative active, third uh, person singular from lego. And so coming into the world, he's making a statement. He's saying, that is, Jesus is saying, Thusion, prasferan, athelesas, Soma katertiso. Uh, notice as we look at these uh, words in Greek, coming into the world, he is saying sacrifice. Thusion is an accusative feminine singular noun from thusia, meaning sacrifice. And prasferan is the accusative feminine singular noun from prasphara which means offering. So note both of these nouns 
are feminine. It has the on ending indicating that it is feminine. And then we come to the verb uh, ethelesos. Notice ethelesos is an aorist active indicative second person singular verb from thelo. In other words, ethelesos means to desire. And so coming into the world, he is saying uh, that you do not desire sacrifice and offerings, but a body you prepared for me. Soma katertiso. Uh, notice soma is the third declension noun, nominative singular, uh, meaning body. It's the genit. Uh, it's actually the genitive form would be somatas. So a body katertiso. A body you have prepared. And katertiso is from katertizo. It means to prepare. And notice here uh, we are looking at an aorist middle indicative uh, verb from that root. So a body you have prepared for me. Moi is the personal pronoun dative singular, first person uh, of the verb ego. It's first person, ego, amu, amoy, and so forth. So as we see this uh, verse put together, we read it this way, wherefore, coming into the world, he is saying, sacrifice and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. Uh, and so as we move on then uh, into uh, looking at verse 6, notice he says, whole burnt offerings, halakautomata kaipuri hamartias uk yudakesas. Whole burnt offerings, and offerings concerning sin you have not desired. As we look at this, let me just, uh, before actually uh, parsing the forms, let me talk a little bit about the idea of a body you prepared for me. This is a quote from the Septuagint, and the Hebrew reads, Oznayin karatali, that is, my ears you pierced. And here we have a body. And I believe it's a quote from the Septuagint looking more at, I'm going to say a, a paraphrase of the Hebrew. Like if, for example, you open the ears, you pierce the ears, it means I'm giving myself as a willing offering to you. This is what David was saying uh, historically as we go back uh, <clears throat> to the Hebrew text. But here it's being applied from the Septuagint with the application to Christ. In other words, a body you have prepared for me. And so uh, the writer of Hebrews is quoting the Psalm 40, going back to the Septuagint, looking at the body of Christ and the incarnation that is going to do away with the sacrificial system. So it reads on, whole burnt offerings then, and offerings concerning sin, you, des you did not desire. And so as we look at these uh, particular uh, forms, notice whole burnt offerings is an accusative neuter plural noun. It's translated burnt offerings, a la kautomata. So burnt offerings and offerings concerning, here we have the preposition with the genitive pari, from artios, meaning sin, offering concerning sin, you did not desire. And eudakesos uh, is your aorist active indicative verb from eudakeo. In other words, you did not desire the sacrifices of whole burnt offerings and offerings concerning sin, but it was that body that now has replaced that. That is the body of Jesus Christ who has come. So 
Jesus is going to willingly come now and offer his body as the sacrifice. And so as we read in verse 7 then, Tata epan edu cheko en kafalide bibliu gegraptai peri amu tu poiesai chata asta thelema su. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book, it has been written concerning me to do, O God, your will. And so as we look at the grammar briefly of verse uh, 7 and following, notice we have the adverb then, and this is followed by apon. Apon is the aorist indicative active first person singular from lego. It's what we call uh, a second aorist, lego apon. So I said, edu hecko kefalidi bibliu gebratai. That is, behold, here we have the particle followed by hecko, which is your present indicative active first person singular from hecko, uh, or hecko, excuse me, is your present indicative first person singular from hecko. Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book, it has been written. Kefalide is a dative feminine singular uh, from the noun kafalis, translated book or scroll. And bibluo, notice the u is indicative of your genitive masculine singular from biblion, meaning book. So in the book, it has been written. Gegraptai. Gegraptai, notice you have your reduplication here, is a perfect passive indicative third person singular from the root grafo. It has been written. And so that uh, reduplication with the gamma and the epsilon gives it away as a perfect. So as we read the text then, in the scroll of the book, it has been written concerning me to do, O God, your will. Notice two poiesai is your aorist infinitive from poieo, uh, articular infinitive with two here, to do, O God, your will. Here we have an address, uh, to do, O God, your will. And ta thelema ta is the third declension noun, thelema, thelema tas, and so forth. So to do your will, O God, it is written to me, about me in the book. And I'm thinking of uh, the book of the Hebrew scriptures where we have the will of God is to do his will, to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind, and to do what he has said. And so Christ is coming to do the will of the Father. And this is how the writer of Hebrews is applying this, to do away with the sacrificial system. So as we move on, anoteran legon chati that is saying above sacrifice and offerings and whole burnt offerings and offerings concerning sin you have not desired nor taken pleasure in, which are being offered according to the law. So as we look at this uh, from a grammatical point of view, notice he is saying that it's not according to the law now, but this is something that God is going to do to do away with the sacrificial system and to establish now a, a new work, and that is he's going to take away what could not take away sins by the sacrificial system, which alone can take away sins. And notice as we look at this, anotaran is your adverb above, where he says uh, burnt offerings, uh, notice uh, sacrifice, and uh, offerings and burnt offerings 
Chalakaltoma means burnt offering. And Ipsis, your noun, followed by Chastis, your indefinite relative pronoun, uh, burnt all, above saying sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings concerning sin you have not desired. Athelesas is from Thaleo. It is the aorist indicative active second person singular from uh, Thaleo. That is, you have not desired, neither taken pleasure in. Eudakesas is your aorist indicative active second person singular from Eudakeo, to take pleasure in, which according to the law are being offered. Prosferantai is your present indicative passive from prosfero to offer. And so when it says that, notice what the writer of Hebrews is then going to say. Uh, he's going to talk about how that is no longer uh, needed because it is being offered according to the law. But now when he says, I have come to do your will, and here we have what is called the Midrash, a commentary in the Greek. Then he has said, Ereken is your perfect indicative active third person singular uh, from uh, Lego to say. Then he has said, It do, behold, echo to poiesai ta thelema su. Then when he says, and he's commenting on in a commentary manner, applying it to Christ on this great psalm, Psalm 40. Behold, I have come to do your will. Again, we have your present indicative active and echo. I have come to do the infinitive again, aorist infinitive from poieo, to do your will. He is taking away anire ta proton hena ta deuteron stese. He is taking away the first that he might establish the second. In other words, he's taking away the Old Testament sacrificial system that he might establish the second. That is the permanent, enduring sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And so as we look at the grammar here, notice that we have uh, Erekin, as we said, uh, which is your perfect indicative active, third person singular from Lego. And we looked at the infinitive that he might, he's taking away the first. And anare is your present indicative active again, as we said, third person singular from anareo. In order that, and here we have henna is a conjunction used with the subjunctive to show purpose or result in order that the second Deuteron is the accusative neuter, neuter singular, meaning second, he might establish. And notice stese is the aorist active subjunctive, third person singular from chistemi to establish. And so we would translate this in order that he might stand or establish the second. And the first sacrificial system is but a shadow that's pointing to the final reality, the writer of Hebrews is saying, which is found in Jesus Christ. So, in hot the lemati hagias menoi esmen biates prasferas tu somatas Jesu Christu effa effa pax. That is, he's now establishing the second by which will, that is by the will of Christ to do this, <clears throat> we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Christ once for all. Notice we have hagias menoi with s men, a paraphrastic participial form, and it's a perfect passive uh, participle from hagiazo. That is, we have been sanctified and esmen is going with it in a paraphrastic way, uh, through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. What a beautiful uh, thought here, that by that one offering, 
once for all the Old Testament sacrificial system, the writer of Hebrews is saying, has been done away. And this perfect passive participial form, nominative masculine singular from Hagiazo, is looking at a completed action with results continuing into the present. And so by the offering of the body of Christ, once for all, we have this wonderful adverb, uh, fapax, once for all, the Old Testament sacrificial system has now been replaced by the new. And it was Christ's will to say, Father, not my will, but yours be done, that made that possible. And the writer of Hebrews, I believe, is driving that home. So he goes on then to talk about how every priest is standing daily offering the same sacrifices which are never able to take away sins. Kaipas men cherus, hesteken kath chemeron le turgon, kaitas autas palakis prosferon tu sias, chaitenes udepate dunatai perielein hamartias. That is, every high priest stood daily offering also the same, often the same sacrifices which are never ever able to take away sins. Notice as we look at this uh, passage in uh, this uh, chapter uh, 10, verse 11, that every high priest Pas is the nominative masculine singular adjective meaning all. Men is the particle meaning on the other hand. Cherus is the nominative masculine singular from Cherus. So every high priest, and notice Chesteken is your perfect indicative active third person singular from Chistemi. And it means has stood daily according to each day, notice kata changes from the ta to the kath, and the final a uh, is uh, elided here. And then chemeron means daily or every day, offering. Here we have the verb leiturgun, uh, from, excuse me, the verb leiturgeo in the participial form here the present active participle nominative masculine singular from leiturgeo. In other words, ministering the same sacrifices often, which are never able to take away sins. And prosferon is simply your present active participle nominative masculine singular from prosferon. Notice your present participle going back to luo, luon, Luantas, Luanti, Luanta, and here we have what would parallel Luon offering uh, sacrifices to see us, which are never. Notice, Haitanus is your indefinite relative pronoun, <coughs> nominative fem feminine plural from Chastis, which are never ever, the adverb Udepate, able, present passive indicative, do not tie third plural from dunamai, never able to take away sins. Notice pare, pare elen is the second aorist indicative active from peri aireo, to take away. It's a contract verb. So the priests were offering sacrifices which were never able to take away sins. But notice the contrast. But he Kutas de mion, but this one, kuper hamartion, prasenekas tu sion, eis ta die nekes, ekafe sin indexia tu theu. But this one, on behalf of sins, having offered sacrifice forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Notice kutas is your personal pronoun, <clears throat> nominative masculine singular, uh, this one, uh, your demonstrative pronoun, 
and de is the contrastive conjunction, but, but this one, again, showing the sharp contrast, uh, once for all, but this one, by offering one sacrifice uh, on behalf of sins, set down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Notice uh, huper is on behalf of harmartion, is your genitive feminine plural noun from harmartia, and prasenekas is an eris active participle, nominative masculine singular from prasfero, having offered. But this one, having offered uh, once for all, forever, esta dienekes goes together as an idiom, meaning forever, by one sacrifice forever, akathesin. It's from the root kathizo, meaning to sit down. And notice it has an augment followed by a sigma after the theta yota. So it is the aorist indicative active third person singular from kathizo. This one set down on the right side, dexia, is your dative feminine singular adjective from dexios, and it means right hand, set down on the right hand of the majesty of God. So of God, we should say, two is your genitive masculine singular uh, article, and thau is your genitive masculine singular from theos, meaning God. Notice the u ending is indicative of the genitive. So Jesus is now reigning as King of kings and Lord of lords, having finished the work of redemption, he is set down on the right side of the majesty on high. And we are told that, that now uh, what is remaining is that he is remaining there until he put enemies under his feet. Taloipan ek de kamenas chaos tethosin hoi ek that is, in verse uh, 13, he's waiting, uh, finally waiting until his enemies be placed the footstool of his feet. By the way, uh, this is a quote from Psalm 110, or an allusion to it, in the Hebrew, Numeronai Ladoni. That is, set at my right side until I make your enemies the footstool of your feet. Loipan is an accusative neuter adverb, uh, which means consequently, we could translate it, uh, waiting. Ekdekamenos uh, is from ekdekamai, meaning to wait. And so waiting, and it is a present middle participle, nominative, masculine, uh, singular, from that root, waiting until the conjunction heos, until, notice, all his enemies be placed under his feet. Tethosin uh, is the aorist passive uh, subjunctive from tithomi, from tithomi, aorist passive subjunctive, third person plural verb from tithemi and show until his enemies hoi ekthroi nominative masculine plural noun from ekthros until his enemies be placed the footstool of his feet uh, hupapadion is the accusative masculine singular noun from hupapadios meaning footstool and then we have the genitive of his feet Christ is now reigning at the right hand of God the Father until all enemies be put under his feet. And we're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that the last enemy that would be put under his feet would be death itself. And so as we read then verse 14, we go on, Miagar prasphara teteleoken eista that is, for by one sacrifice, he has perfected 
forever those who are being sanctified. Mia is your dative feminine singular from ches, meaning one. Gar is just your conjunction uh, indicating purpose for. And then plus fara, notice is a dative feminine singular noun from plus faro, uh, uh, meaning, to, meaning to sacrifice. And so, or from plus fara, meaning sacrifice. For by one sacrifice, teteleoken, he has perfected. This is a perfect indicative active third person singular verb from teleao, a contract verb. And notice that omega is showing contraction. We have reduplication in the te, uh, the tau, and the epsilon, and then we have the kappa. So we are looking at a perfect here. And tus hagiat sominos, in other words, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. And hagiat samenus is a present passive participial uh, form, accusative masculine plural from hagiadzo, to set apart. So the ones who are being set apart or sanctified. And so what a beautiful picture here is by one offering, he has perfected forever. So we don't need the ongoing sacrificial offerings of the uh, sacrificial system, the writer of Hebrews is saying, but it's a done deal, it's done. And so what he does in conclusion, he will quote uh, Psalm, excuse me, Jeremiah uh, 31 again about the new covenant. And uh, the Holy Spirit has testified to us after he, after having said, this is the covenant which I will make with them after these days, says the Lord, when I put my laws in their heart and I write them in their understanding and their sins and their lawless deeds, I will no longer remember again. And where there is the offering for these, there is no longer a sacrifice for sins. Uh, by the way, what a beautiful conclusion. We started off with the new covenant. We conclude with the new covenant, sort of like an envelope effect. We started off with it in uh, chapter 8. We're concluding with it here in chapter 10, having shown how Christ, by his willingness to come, has done away with the sacrificial system and now established the permanent work of redemption. For the Old Testament sacrifices were only a shadow pointing to that final reality, which is Jesus Christ. And where there is forgiveness now of sins, there is no longer an offering concerning sins. It's a done deal. And when Jesus said to tell us thy, that was it. It was completed at that point. I think I need to stop here. Uh, to go on would be maybe too long, but if you go to actually Google Books under my name, you'll see uh, a little brief grammar that we have written. We're trying to do these small inductive uh, brief grammars to help just, uh, if ministers wanna follow along in their Greek New Testament, that would be great. We could uh, do that together. So thank the Lord for that final sacrifice of Jesus Christ that has opened the way into the Holy of Holies by what he has done on our behalf.